Hi everyone, welcome to the session on inventory management. Now the word inventory management, I know normally people think it's a very time consuming, boring, cumbersome. But the way I look at it, if you look from the supply chain concept, it's a very interesting subject. I try to summarize, it facilitates the balancing of demand and supply. Obviously we have inventories to ensure because to take care of demand. But if demand goes down and my supply is coming as usual, my inventory level will go up. But if my supply is coming less and the demand is more, my inventory will be less. In both the scenarios, one time if I've got more dem demand, less supply, I will lose customer. I, I will lose my sale. And other side, if my demand has gone down, while the supply is coming up as usual, my inventory will go up. So when the inventory goes up, mean my money gets blocked up. My cash position become poor. So if you see as a supply chain person, it helps you to balance the demand and supply. So it's a very important function. I know in many of the companies, this is given not that importance around the way I look at it from the supply chain context. This is a very critical, very important. Just to give you my own personal experience, I visited one, whenever I visit any companies, every week I visit someone, first thing I look is their balance sheet. Last week I was with some company, I happened to see the balance sheet. So in the balance sheet, I was looking around how much inventory they are carrying around. You can imagine a company which is having three months inventory. That means the turnaround time is only four times in a year. So when there's a three month inventory, that means your money, your cash, your working capital is blocked. If that three month could have been one month, or if it just go to just in time, you can imagine you free up the capital. Your cash position becomes better. So this is the beauty of inventory management. So if I look in a bigger picture from supply chain, to me, this is a very critical part of it. Around. So with this in mind, let me tell you what I expect to cover today. First thing is in this next one hour, I'll try to cover the concept of inventory management. What is inventory management? The role of inventory management in supply chain as a whole, if I look around supply chain, importance of inventory management. Is it really important? I mean, I've given you some flavor. Classifying the inventory is very, very important. If I look from the techniques of management, classifying comes number one to me. So normally when people ask me, what are the best practices? I'll say there may be many best practices. The very first best practices classify as per ABC classification or some other classification. I'll walk through different classifications. The next come inventory accuracy part. Obviously you're carrying inventory. If audit does and it accuracy, the figures don't match. Your system says I've got so many pieces of the nuts and bolts, but when you go there, actual one is not there. So you want inventory accuracy and time with us. What are the policies and procedures? I know these policies and procedures are very sometimes cumbersome. This need to be simplified and digitalized, I would say. The valuation part, very critical. There are different ways. I could go with FIFO, I could go with LIFO, I could go with weighted average. The one I visited this year, last week company around, they were using weighted average. So which one to use, when and where, and which one is useful if my economy is going, the cost of inflation is going on, then which one is better? If it is deflation going on, which one is better and when to use where? The order size. Should I place the order as per the, my supplier saying, guys, give me a minimum of this. Then I have to see my own. So you have to hold the inventory. Is a question of buying it, the combination part, which is economic order quantities. Around. Value stream mapping, just in time, then we've got vendor management inventories around, KPI, this is very critical. I think some friends have sent us a question in advance. They talked about the KPIs. What are the measures for inventory management? 
Is the job, if I'm head of inventory, my job is only just take care of inventory? Are there any measures for me to become with the word benchmark? And then disposal part. There are surplus inventory, there are obsolete inventories. Should I dispose them off? So finally, what I would say, the objective I look in one hour is better understanding what is inventory, all the W's, what is inventory, why inventory is required, and how to maintain it, and by what means I should do it around. So in short, the decision making has to link all this thing around. What is inventory? By now, I think I made clear. Inventory, when I'm talking of the two words around, one is called assets, one is called inventory. Now, assets are the ones which are capitalized. If you look at the balance sheet, they're capitalized. They are machinery, equipments, which are used to convert your raw material into the final product. So those are my assets. So here we're talking of inventories, which are the one could be the item which are converted, transformed into the final product. So if you see the inventories, what we have in the, any supply chain, raw material, very first, components, sometimes I get ready-made components from someone, let's say from an auto company, I get the raw material, sheets, this, that, oil, everything around, but then components like engine, radiators, filters, they're coming up ready-made. Then my raw material is going through the process, so there is a work in process around. There's a finished goods, is the distribution inventories around, and lastly, it is MRO item. Particularly for manufacturing, you have MROs items around. Now, coming as what is inventory? So, let me again try to explain this around. So, in short, I would say it's a technique. Technique of what? Controlling, storing and keeping track of your inventory items. So these are three things we do around very broadly. And as I said to you in the very beginning, it's a very critical component of supply management. So if I have to summarize in the old fashioned way, it is just to keep a record of each and every new and return products. Some items are going out, some are coming back. As it enters or leaves a warehouse or point of sale, that's what keeping a record around. So some people say, guys, my job is just to keep a record around. If my records are good, my accuracy is there, I have done my job. But there's something more than that also. So if I have to put down in the simple words, it is basically to streamline your operations, organize your resources, and maximize the return. If you look at a managerial level, if you look at the operation level, yes, my job is just to keep a record. But if you look at the managerial level, it's much more than that. And that's where it becomes a very interesting function, I would call it. Around. Think of a company which doesn't have a good inventory management, then me, your supply chain is failing. To me, this is the heart of the supply chain. Procurement is buying, yes, but at the end of the day, it's all going into inventory. Now the next question come on the matrix of SCM. There are many matrix around. The only thing which is very popular is turnaround time. But that's the way, but there are many more than that. If I said to you in the beginning, to me, it's a litmus test. I said to you when I visited last week one company, I looked at the balance sheet, looked at the warehousing, how much inventory they have around, how much stock and trade they have around, and that gave me the very good idea about what this company does. So it's a litmus test for the overall the health of the financial. Higher the inventory means this company is certainly coming under the cash crunch. I can tell you in one word around, if any company balance sheet you look around, inventory is very high. Today, if you look at the pharma companies, all of them are near around three months. Auto companies used to be three to four or five months. Today, I would say they've done wonderfully well some have come close to 21 days, some have come to 20 days. They're trying to improve every time. Although we are not reached the total just in time, but they have improved a lot. Those companies which are stuck with a higher inventory, the reason is, as I said to you, is a balancing of demand and supply. That means you are doing the supply, but the demand part, you don't have any doubt. Idea. So demand is not in your control. 
Yes, you don't have control, but you need a wonderful understanding of it, good prediction of it. If demand is not controlled, so you will obviously land up higher inventory or lower inventory. In both cases, it's a suicidal. If I look at the measures of a good inventory management technique wise, one is the turnaround time, the days of inventory. My turnaround time may be good, but then there are some items, could be A class item, something they are stuck for three months, six months, eight months. So days of inventory is also important. Cash to cash cycle is also very important which still have to see in any company which the people are really looking at the finest guy. I buy something, whether raw material, components, whatever I do. So I'm spending 60 to 70% of the company's money and that all is going through the inventory part. So my cash has gone as a raw material, my cash has gone as a components. Now finally, the, my finished goods has to go out and the finished good has to go to the customer, then only get the cash back. So the cycle time from the day I spend my money and from the day I get my money back is very crucial. So you have to look around, like last time I said around, you have to be the CFO of the supply chain. You have to look all the time these ideas around. If you're not looking in the cash, you're not looking at the working capital, just saying, guys, my inventory is accurate then you're not doing a managerial job, I would call it, a strategic job. You're doing a tactical job. So you have to look around, guys. The day I put my pump, my money inside, the day I get my money back from the supplier, customer, how much cycle time it is. Can I cut down this? So this is very important around to look as a measure of performance part. Now, again, coming and explaining around inventories when we talk around is, you can see the procurement guy placing an order. So raw material comes in, component comes in, both are going to the production. And there's a furniture making company. From the production, it is coming as finished goods, going to the sales. So this cycle is the one when you're trying to look at cash to cash. So your inventory could be raw material, inventory could be work in progress, inventory could be component, work could be finished goods. So all are part of the inventory. So when we look at the function of inventory, why do we have inventories? Very important is to meet anticipated demands. Sometime back, we were having a workshop. Do we really need inventories? Do we really need a warehouse? So if I look at the logistics 4.0, which is smart logistics, the trend is towards not having a warehouse, not having inventories around. But that I know you need many things around infrastructure. That's it's a long-term goal I can call, but not today. So today, when we talk of inventories, is to meet the anticipated demand, to smooth the production requirements. You might have seen those who are for manufacturing, the work is stuck in one place, particular component does not come, and it happens worldwide. Nothing to big thing around it. But if it is planned properly, it is monitored properly, controlled properly, there's a possibility that we could have less hiccups around. So to protect against stockouts is very crucial. So you don't want stockouts to be there. Take advantage of order cycles to help hedge against the price increases. I remember my time when we used to have the inventories around, we knew very well, let's keep inventory for six months. It's just like buying a gold. We know very well in six months, the price will go up. So I don't lose anything, even by keeping inventories around. So I remember we used to buy copper pipes and going back to 74, 75, and price was shooting every time. So the concept was buy six months stock, no issues. So there won't be any problems around. But today the prices are fluctuating very often. So in those situations, I think we have to take advantage of this. Permit the operations to take advantage of quantity discount. Sometime, you know very well, supplier also says, guys, my production batch is this one. You want only 20 pieces, I have to set up my machine. My, my machine is designed for 100 pieces. If you say 20 or 100, price 
difference may be very negligible. Then you say, guys, let me go with the quantity discount. Now, significance of inventories. When we look at the in inventory part, what is exactly the issue? Cost of money is tied up in the stock. Fixed storage space it is occupying. There's the money involved. There's a variable storage cost around. If quantities are going up and down, the managerial cost is also there. And then certainly if you're keeping for a longer time, stock deterioration is there, loss, obsolescence, cost, everything else. So if you look totality wise, it might be around 8%, 7%, 9%, depends company to company of the production cost. So if that 8 or 10%, if I can chip down, great. That's what we look around. And particularly when you look from the e-commerce angle, if you look at companies like Walmart and those who are the West leaders, or even Amazon, the, because ultimately given by the supplier, they are the retailers in between. Their cost of whatever if case somebody is to store and move, it is coming around 1.52% maximum. So this is where we need for those people who are in the e-commerce business and those in other business around, they have to work out their own benchmark. Do we do a good job or a bad job in the same sector? I, I, we cannot compare with every sectors. If I'm in a pharma, I'll compare with the word benchmark in pharma. If I'm in the auto, we have to compare with them. Retail business, e-commerce business, everybody has to do. The objective when we talk of inventory management is very summary said, acceptable level of customer service. My product is very popular, yes. But if I don't keep the stock of it, the guy come three times, four times, finally the guy say, guys, these people are bad people. Your loyalty of the customer changes. So you have to keep the customer. Think of those products whose shelf life is six months. Every six months, new model comes in. You have to ensure, you cannot say my product will come after six months. So six months means six months. So neither you have to overstock, neither understock. Allow cost efficient operations, minimize inventory investments. So this one, I think I can skip it because we are covered up to some extent. Now the role of inventory manager is to optimize inventory level. So I'm trying to re-emphasize inventory manager is not just to keep a records around, keep my records are perfect, I'm doing a great job. You're not doing a managerial job, you're doing a tactical job. If you're doing as a managerial job, then you have to think around whether my inventory levels are optimum or not. Can I cut down? Think as a finance guy, reduce the holding cost, parts varieties and surpassing international quality and traceability standards. Maximize the service level. Now service level is linked with the inventory. If my inventory level is very low, that means I'm not very agile. So when the requests come, I tell them guys, can you wait for one week? My service level is poor. My competitors say no week, I'll give you same day. Now this is the one which explains beautifully the where the cash gets. I said the cash is a seed after selling the goods. Then I place the order because I sold something. My inventory level has gone down. Now new orders are pumping in. For the new orders, I have to make the purchase orders. I have to make the inventories of the raw materials, <clears throat> other production resources, work in process, other pro inventories of finished goods. Again, distribution, the whole cycle is there. So one side I pump in the money and then other side it comes out. I think this gives you a very simple way understanding of event. Like a tank, water is flowing depending on the needs. Other side is my supply. So what I'm doing, supply versus demand, I'm balancing it. So my inventory level is little more than the demand part to take care of the fluctuation. So ultimately, I'm trying to balance the two. So I'm keeping some safety level or buffer stock. Otherwise, both are matching. So this is the way I think we expect any inventory level to work on for each and every item. So it is not in totality is one thing. Then within A item, B item, C item, what level I have got around. 
Now, who holds the event? Where to hold the event? Now, one could be, it could be customer manage. It could be vendor manage. And third could be the cross docking operation. This was one of those days revolutionary ideas which Walmart brought. Let's say I am my central warehouse. My goods are coming from one plant to that place. From there, it has to go to different stores. One could be that I bring it to the store, enter it there, again, take it out and send to different store. The duplicate work. So the cross talking mean it comes there inward, then outward goes from there itself without bringing the second entries around. So that cross talking operation in those days when it came, Walmart started around because they had their own transportation unit of 3,500 trucks. This was a called as a wonderful idea, sir. Now everybody's trying to copy that ideas. <clears throat> I think this gives you an inventory structure, how it pulls up. You make a purchase order because there's a demand. Now the moment you make a purchase order, there's a bill, there's a stock item, stock comes in and stock item goes up. Then side by side, you get the sales order coming around. Then you make an invoice, inventory drops down because you have invoice, the goods are there. Then stock reorders and the whole chain goes on. So one side there's a flow, outward flow, one side is inward flow. And to take care of this, procurement also plays a key role, inventory plays a key role. But if you look at the heart of the whole chain, whether it's a sales side, whether it's a procurement side, whether it's a transportation side, inventory is in the heart of it. So it is the key point of balancing demand supply. Now, coming back to the impact on your organization, some people say, guys, what is the impact of everybody thinking inventory just to storehouse? Sometimes I feel it's a very wrong name calling, oh, you are just a storekeeper. And to me, it is not. It is really a managerial function from the inventory hunter. So if you look at the impact on your organizations, every organization has got three things. One, structure. We talk of any organizations whether surveys, whether this, whether e-commerce, whether manufacturing. Everybody has a structure, everybody has a process, and everybody has a system. Structure means in that activities around, whether you talk about auto, pharma, retail business, e-commerce business, service industries. So that covers all the crucial components together. So there's a structure. That's how they speak to each other. There are different functions. I know in some company, the functions are silos, but if you connect them together, they're structured. Then we have a sequence of activity, SOPs we call around process. The third is the system part. System means we always link with IT. How does this all elements speak to each other? And now to understand this, I think I found the very good example is to compare with the functioning of a car. So car functioning, now you have to check around in the car, which component is inventory part. So it's just for understanding the concept part. Around. So I'm trying to go into depth of it around. If you look at the car, you have a chassis. So what does chassis does? It keeps all the components together, but the engines, radiators, your whole thing is there. So same way inventory management is nothing but it's a chassis of a car. If inventory management is not there to connect the marketing, procurement, everybody around logistics, then you can imagine around they're all fall apart. So to me, inventory management, if you have to understand, and if I compare with a car, it's more like a chassis. So you can imagine car can't run, work without a chassis. No company can work without inventory management, particularly the manufacturing. So this one I tried to explain a little bit. If I look from the organization angle, again with the car example, car is an organization. So where the chassis becomes your inventory and the engines and the wheels, they're all connected because of the chassis. So that is how the organization has been set up. Then there are processes you know very well. You press the button, you press the lever, you press this, you press put the key. Then all activity starts in the chain. So same case happens in inventory management also. When the goods goes out and you find it is going to below the minimum level, it, some companies have got auto replenishment. 
Some places they send their masses to the purchase order. Guys, this has gone below the stock level. Place an order. So those goes automatic. But today still I find many of the companies that work in a very manual way. But if this could be done in a car, can we think of inventory management as the chassis, which connects all the components of an organization? The day you say, guys, my stock level has gone down, depending on the demand, then all the process should start automatically. So automate is again word I would use it here and systems. That means inventory can only work well when it is connected with the demand, it is connected with the marketing, it is connected with the procurement, it is connected with everyone. So once you connect everybody like a chassis with all the parts, so streamlining, optimizations, tracking, accuracy, everything is there. So I've tried to explain inventory's role like in a car and car is an organization, chassis is my inventory. Now comes to the management techniques. We're talking in the word management. So when we talk of management, means there are different techniques around. The very first thing obviously comes in just in time. Everybody wants just in time. Cut down my inventory levels. Economic order quantities, minimum order quantities, drop shopping, shipping around, consignments, ABC analysis, first in, first out, FIFO, LIFOs, weighted average. I've tried to explain a little more on this. I think this gives beautifully concept of this. It gives you inventory management is a practice of what tracking, controlling inventory orders. It's uses, storages, along with management of finished goods as well. Now the techniques which I've said earlier, some, most of them are repeat. ABC analysis is very important. Now, here the inventory levels are classified into A, highly expensive. We basically use Pareto analysis 80-20. B is moderately expensive. C is less expensive. The next come in just in time, which is again came from the Toyotas. Toyota production systems. So in this case, the company which is needed during the production, we only does that. MRPs is all about planning, aggregate planning is around, is a technique in which orders are placed around. Then we have EOQ model, economic order quantities, minimum safety levels. Then we have got VD analysis part, like you've got ABC analysis, you also have got VD and fast, slow and fast moving also. Now this one I'll explain a little bit. The VD is used very often for spare part. Because for spare part, I will not go with ABC analysis. If I go to plant like oil company, a steel manufacturing company, spare parts are very crucial. Or even in the airline, my spare parts, I will be doing with the VED analysis. Now, ABC analysis is a technique. I think it's very clear, already explained around A mean high cost items. And some people call also ABC as always better control analysis. If I look at the best practices around, ABC comes on the top. Except for the spare parts, this may not be relevant. For spare parts, I'll go with another one. So ABC classification is a method of determining level of control. I think it's a very common sense thing around. Something costs me more. If those items are lost, I'm in trouble. I need a better control. Then there are C-class items, low value items. Even if the accuracy is less, no issues around because the cost is less. So Pareto analysis of 80-20 falls on that. So A item means that typically 20% of the items, if you've got 10,000 type of items, so 2,000 items will cover 80% of the value inventory value. Naturally, it makes sense I have to control that. I cannot afford to lose sight on that part. B means again the next one. That means additional 30% of the item, but value wise 15%. The C is the one which is big number, 50%, but the value was 5%. So even if my error, error happens around, it's not that suicidal as A and B item around. So that's why when we do the counting check around, 
in A, I might be doing on a regular basis. B, I might be doing with a longer period of time because the cost of checking the amenities costs you a lot. So A, B, C could be very important, moderately important. C is the least important because the importance I say least and many is basically driven by the money involved. So the money involved in A is very high, 80%. The 20% is involved between B and C. B is 15%, C is 5%. So Pareto was 80-20. So A remains in the A category. B and C put together becomes 20%. That's it. Now when it comes to cycle counting also, it gives you very good ideas around normally the practices. A items, some company might be doing on a daily basis. It depends. But majority have have seen A items each month, B items could be quarterly, C could be every six months. So if you really see around, each month mean let's say I've got 20 working days in a month, and I've got 500 varieties around, 500 divided by 20 means 25 items have to be seen daily. Now things are becoming even simpler also some places particularly with drones and RFID. So if I look around RFID and drones, if you each and every item has an RFID, radio signals are coming around, drones is picking up, it can check easily, not issue around. Just in time, the next technique I would call is a philosophy. As I said to you, it was obviously started by Toyota, and now it is being followed many places around. Auto industry brought the revolution through this. Now, objective in this one, GIT, is to maximize the production and minimize the maintenance part. You want to cut down the inventories. I remember the time when I visited Toyota's. Inventories, two hours, three hours, you're not piling up a lot. Fundamentals of GITs. So basically, the focus in GIT is elimination of waste. It could be production waste, if I'm doing overproduction. If things have to line up and wait for something to be loaded, again a waste. Rejection, again is a waste. So if you cut down your waste, is also part of the GIT. GIT is not only from the inventory angle, all wastages are part of it. If items are lying for three months, six months, is a waste. Similarly, the lean management in Kanban system, all of you are very conversant. The push and pull system, very popular, I would say, which Dell brought it in good old days, which made them the hero over the HP. Earlier that everybody was making guys, our job is to make products, then push into the market. But then the concept kept, why should we make it and then let's item finish goods align? Why not be driven by the customer? So we ultimately move from customer-driven approach. So when the customer is driving us, we came in the pool. Then only we make it. So if you talk of MRP, another technique, I'm sure all of you are conversant. Heart of it is MRP. You have your master production schedule. Now, based on the operational schedule, you have got operational capacities, production, material, this, that. You have all inventory records, bill of materials, purchase orders, material requirements, production orders. So basically, all are connected, and MRP makes it up, guys. What is my plan? Sir? First thing is bill of material. What do I need to make 20 pieces now? Because bill of material will be coming at independent demand angle. The independent demand has got dependent demands. Let's say I'm making a bike. The bike could be... 10,000, but then each bike needs two wheels. So that means my dependent demands of wheels is 20,000. So looking around how much stock I have got, how much more I have to get around, how many purchase orders I've gone, how much materials are already in the moving in the production shop. So keeping in mind, I make my MRPs. So MRP is an inventory control methods technique you could call around. It's a management technique. Only they order the inventory after considering the sales forecast. So starting is all the time sales forecast. So based on sales forecast, you're making the production production plan. So what does MRP does is nothing but integrates the data from various areas of business. 
So from different areas of business, from production, from procurement, this, that, you integrate them and then you come up, guys, this is what we need. Next come the technique is economic order quantity. Obviously, you're placing an order for a particular batch. So the moment the order comes in, delivery comes in, it pushes the inventory up. So then the usage starts. So then when we start the uses, the production starts, inventory level starts going down. So in this case, you can see inventory level is in the beginning 800. So then I'm doing a production, 600. So then 600 is going down to the zero, but you will not wait till zero. Okay, we all know there's a lead time for getting the next lot. So my lead time could be something T. So that means that much time before I place my order so that my by the time it comes to zero level, my stock is there. So this is how it comes around. The way it is designed here, we are assuming the demand is known to us and constant, which we all know it is never constant. It is changing at the last minutes. And certainly if it is constant, I don't need any safety level. Lead time is known 100%, which also is... So this graph, the way for understanding is drawn very simple way, but the real life is not that simple because the lead time changes. It could be many reasons. Supplier is good, but the supplier is depending on tier one, tier two supplier, tier three supplier. So the item may not be coming, the raw material may not be coming. There may be strike on the way around. Could be any reasons around. So no quantity discounts are available or demand is satisfied. So this is very simple EOQ assumptions around for purpose of understanding. So when we understand EOQ, we're saying there's a holding cost, more the material, more the holding cost, simple straight line. Ordering cost, more I place an order, my obviously price is less. I get a leverage of pricing. So if you combine the two, the place where the both lines are joining together, that EOQ, economic order quantity. So this technique focused on taking a decision regarding how much quantity of inventory should company order. It saves the ordering cost, carrying cost, at the end of the day, we want to able to place the right quantity of inventory. Now, this is very academic. Let me also agree. On the real life, demand is fluctuating. Lead time is changing. Now, how to cope up with all this, you need a safety level. So this is where I would say, if demand information is coming on a real time basis, actually we are in supply chain, we promote the concept of supply chain tower. So if you have a supply chain tower, demand part, the customer is driven, connected. Your inventory is also connected. Procurement is connected. All are connected. Everybody gets the information right time. So in the process, I'm not saying that you're trying to mitigate all things, but no, you cut down this possibility of demand and supply not balancing or getting over inventories around. So that's the advantage we get with that. So this is how it is there around. So you have a reorder level, the lead time basis, again, fixed quantity level, order quantity. Now this order quantity, which you're placing an order depends on the batch size, which supplier says, guys, if you buy this size, I give you this price. At the bottom, I've got a safety level. So my safety level covers my service level. If my safety level is very small, and suddenly the demand peaks up, Am I able to cope up? No, if not, my service level is poor. But if my safety level is on the high side, it again got two parts. Higher level means my cash is blocked around, my working capital is blocked. But I'm able to give responsiveness 100%, no issues. I'm 100% agile, I'm responsive, but my inventory level goes up. So you one has to design the safety level with a very nice academically what should be the one so the definition of service level the level of safety stocks what i can do 
the percentage, the very first line explains the percentage of requisition orders satisfied at first request. That is very important. First request. You may say, guys, okay, you have asked for 40 pieces. I'm giving you 30 pieces. 10 pieces I'll send you after 10 days. That means your service level is poor. There's a concept of drop shopping. So basically, drop shopping means you don't stock it. And this is used mostly from the reverse auction, from the e-commerce angle. You don't stock it. You tell the persons from where the goods have to be sent. They go and they drop it. Some e-commerce companies say, guys, no, everything has to come to one place. And we will take care of transportation. We want to track and trace. So some people follow this. So in short, you could say drop shopping is act as a mediator. Consignment part also is there around where retailer agrees to sell a product and store it in his in a warehouse. So they consign to you. Supplier owns the product, but they are coming to your place. If you are an e-commerce company in this, they are consigned to you. But if there are unsold products, it's a return to the supplier. So basically they're keeping the inventory at your premises at their cost except they're occupying your space. This is the one VED, which is very important for MRO item. So I know one or two company, I happened to deal with them. One was a steel company, one was oil company. VED is important. When we're dealing with spare parts, maintenance spare parts, I will not go much ABC, I'll go with this one. Some items are very essential, even a small nut could make a difference around. So I'll give more focus on this. I will not treat, okay, the C item, I will not even, I will not check it, I'll check after one year. I remember the case when Boeing was, one case study was there and on. So Boeing found that the, nut, the bolts and nuts which are connecting the wings with the body, they were short. Item may be a C-class item, but if I look from this angle, it's very essential. A plane cannot go without that. I can't assemble it. Nobody will buy without wings. So sometimes spare parts, I think you have to look around which are very critical. Without that, my things cannot work. So it is not the price alone. It is this part also very important. Fast, slow, non-moving item. I think this could be done in parallel with ABC. I do ABC analysis, but then I have to see which are the moving items very fast. Some are slow moving. So my decisions could be depending on ABC analysis, certainly the best practice. Plus, if I can combine this FSN method, then the combination of two will help me to get a very better decision. Order size, certain lot for lot. I need 20 pieces, I buy only 20 pieces. Fixed order quantities, min max, it depends where you get the best deal. Now, the mathematical model of EOQ, US, I mean, we have already gone through the EOQ, economic production quantity also. Since I have been in the production myself, I know my machine can produce so much. My setup time is six hours. And you give me a batch of 20 pieces, which I can finish in one hour. My cost of setup is too high. And I'm going to transfer that cost to you. I say, guys, let me cover my six hours at least for 10 hours, 12 hours, so that your cost is less. So sometimes production quantity has to be seen around. Quantity discount model also in there, guys. Supplier tells you guys, if you buy this, I'll give you this discount. So all this mathematically, you have to work it out what is economic. Objective, I think inventory turnover is certainly there. Customer service is certainly there. When we talk of effective inventory management, mean we are looking at the reasonable estimates of holding cost. Ordering cost, shortage cost, and classification system. So whenever you're trying to design and make any decision, look at these costs also. Wherever I've gone around many places, inventory part around, they have this information, but more with the finance. I didn't see much with inventory, the rates, how much is the holding cost, how much is the holding cost. So in the process, I found they are not much involved in the managerial function. This one is wonderful, I would call it supply positioning model, which was started by Peter Krasik. 
we convert the whole spend into four boxes. And we say that the routine item, leverage item, critical, bottom line. The routine items, low values, I could have high level of safety stock because they are low values, low risk. But leverage items, since they are high cost, risk is less. I can buy anytime, even the short notice. My lowest safety level I'll keep around. And my review interval will be also short. But if you look at the critical, which are high risk, high value, relatively low safety stocks around, but review system will be very short. And I will do very deg high degree of monitoring and control. The when I say critical means without them, nothing can go out. My finished good wills will not be able to move out. So that means critical requires high degree of monitoring and controls, shortest review intervals, bottlenecks, highest level of safety stock around. Item is a bottleneck, low values. But again, is a high risk. There are very few suppliers. Start review intervals. Again, high degree of this thing. So I think this one also explains you the different model. The necessity of stock taking. I know every inventory people, they are busy with this all the time. Since your inventory is becoming a part of profit and loss and balance sheet, it's a part of financial reporting. So you have to do necessity of stock taking. Financial reporting, security and avoidance of frauds, ensuring the inventory replenishment is based on accurate data. Suppose I'm doing replenishment, and replenishment I'm doing, I've got 1,000 pieces of this, but actually maybe 950, so that means my decisions are not correct. Use of space, certainly very important around. Showing up temporary accumulation of stock in understanding this. Methods and accuracies, certainly I can do periodic chain stock taking, continuous ones, which is the cycle countings. So this is how it goes on. It depends on your policies. In the case of per perpetuals, it's a continuous records of inventory and cost of goods sold. Periodic means after particularly at the end of accounting period, I do it alone. So I see many companies doing perpetual basis. Now the valuation method, which is very, very important around, obviously you all know very well, LIFO, FIFO, weighted average. Which one to use, where and when, that's what I will try to explain around. Terminology, everybody knows first in, first out. So in the inventory level, I might have bought some item at price of, let's say, $100. They came first. The later item came at $120. The later came at $140. The first one are going first out at that price. So the valuation part. So that's what I like to explain around. So when we talk of FIFO, it assigns the cost of earliest acquired units to cost of goods sold. So when the cost of costing I'm doing of the goods sold, I'm looking at the over lower price, assuming there's inflation. Then cost of newer unit assigned the ending inventories. FIFO provides inventory valuation that closely approximate the actual market value of the inventory and the balance sheet data. If the prices are going up from $100, let's say per piece to $120, FIFO leads to higher net income. So this methodology will lead to higher net income, particularly case if it's inflation going on. If it's a downward price, then the reverse will happen. LIFOs, last in, first out. I think this table gives you wonderful comparisons around. If period of rising prices, FIFO will say higher ending inventory, lower cost of goods sold, higher net income if the prices are going up. While in the case of LIFO, my lower net income. And but if it is the falling price, in FIFO, I'll be showing lower net income, while in the case of LIFO, I'll be showing higher. So that's an impact on this around. 
Now coming back to the weighted average, my initial price was, let's say in the inventory, I've got three lots around. I take the average price, my initial price, my last price, and in between I add them up all together and then divide by the quantity and I say my weighted average. So it produces the gross profit somewhere between FIFO and LIFO. So you can see around in the rising price, it'll, again, it'll be between FIFO and LIFO. So many companies I've seen, they're using weighted average. It depends case to case. Now coming back to the operation strategies, I would say too much inventories tends to hide problems. Sometimes you feel that I've got stock of everything in a higher side. Everything is going smoothly, no problem. Production is going. But your inventory level is very high. Some items are getting obsolete. It's easier to live with problems than to eliminate them. I know some people say, hey, let me live with this problem, let them hide under the sea. Nobody wants to eliminate it. It costs you to maintain. Certainly it's costly because you're keeping very higher inventories. Why strategy would be reduce the lot size, reduce the safety stock, Look at all this thing around. On the coming on the best practices around, I will say first thing is ABC analysis, classification is very, very important around. Try to do, if you're trying to, if you're able to do it, the barcoding part. If barcoding is not feasible, then good. If I mean if you're doing very, if you have a technically very strong office, you can go into RFID with the radio signal, it gives you. You don't have to go and sit and scan it around. The information goes straight away. So I leave it to you. I think there has to be an effort. I would say in India, if I look around, slowly people are moving into the barcodes, still not all. But then there are few companies who are moving into RFID. So accuracy level goes much faster. So that's another strategy I would say around, and some I've already mentioned here. Well, friend, with this, I want to thank you all and enjoy the weekend.